Hello everyone, I am Banim Lord Abdurazak and I'm here before you with another exciting content today on biology. It's with the topic plant and animal. So before we go for, I believe we all know that biology is a study of living things. It deals with what all living things can do, how they do it, why they do it. In biology, there's always a relationship between the structure or environment. In this content today, we are going to learn how to understand the different kinds of living things, how they classify them. Most of these activities in this content will take you only 5 to 10 minutes to complete. So, we are going to read this content, how it's divided into 5 sections. So, the first section here we have the characteristics of living organism. The second one is the classification of living organism. The third one is the hierarchical classification system. The, the third one is the binomial system of naming classes. The, one, the last one but not least is the binomial system of naming species. So, when you have studied this content, you should be able to list and describe the characteristics of an organism. Define the time, nutrition, excretion, sensitivity, reproduction, growth, and movement. You should also be able to outline the use of theoretical classification system for living organism. The last one, you should also be able to classify living organism into kingdom, order, classes, families, genera, and species. So, so here is the characteristic of living things. There are seven activities which make organisms different from non-living things. The first activity is the nutrition, which is also known as feeding. So, living things take in material from their surroundings that's used for growth to provide energy. The second one is respiration. Respiration is the release of energy from from food substances in all living cells. The third one is the movement. All living things move. They change in position. Move. Plants move moves in various different ways, which is also known as locomotion. The next one is the excretion. All living things excrete. Excretion is defined as the removal of toxic material. The waste products of metabolism and sentences in excess from the body of an organism. And also the growth. Growth, this is, in, this is seen in all living things. It involves using food to produce new cells. The permanent increase in cells, number and size is called the growth. So the reproduction, all living things, all living organisms have the ability to reproduce or produce the young ones. The last one, but only is the sensitivity. So they just simply as respond to the stimuli, either to the light, temperature, water, gravity, or chemical substances. So we are going to look, look at the next slide here. We have the hierarchical classification system, the, which in each kingdom is further divided into smaller group called phyla, based on a few features that are shared by some organism. For example, the arthropod phylum contains all the animals without backbone that, are al that also have the joint legs and a hard covering over their body, such as insects, crushings, and spider. So, a phylum is the subdivided into classes, orders, families, general, and the final species. So, I want to look at this, the chart that shows the hierarchical system of classification so the first one on this chart is the kingdom the kingdom you have many characteristics on, on the kingdom the first one is that this the and uh, the, the organism on, in this kingdom one they lack organized dna they have no mitochondria in their cells in their cell cytoplasm the cell wall like cellulose they are microscopic single cell organism they feed autotrophically or heterotrophically. So we we'll go to the next one, which is the phylum. In this, in, in phylum also, their characteristics are as follows: one, they possess soft, flat, and unsegmented body. The second one is they are bilateral, symmetrically. Two, the third one is they have no body cavity. The fourth one is they possess alimentary canal with lightly, with lightly branch delivery cellular which is which means that they have no anus the f last one on the phylum is some are free living eg planaria 
while the others are parasites e.g. liver flukes and tap worms so we'll go to the next one which is the class so in the in class their their characteristics is as follow also they are all aquatic animals they possess gills for expression throughout their lives they possess fins for locomotion that is the movement the, their body are streamlined in shapes the last one on classes is that they are cold blooded animal so we can go ahead to the, we want the family they are just they are classified into different kind of shapes what the genus here we have is the section of dna which the genome that carry the information to make a molecule are usually important they contain the instruction for our individual characteristics like eye the hair color in human and other complex organisms genes are split into coding exons and non coding sequence which is the intro so we will, we will also look at the last one but not the least which is the species is species simply refers to a group of closely related organisms that have commonly physical and genetic characteristics and are able to interbreed to produce to produce fertile offspring so we're going to look at the next slide which is this table showing us how this system can be used to classify in human being as we have seen earlier, the, the kingdom which is the animalia, on animal, same as zebra. The phylum also we have the cotida, animal with a backbone. Class is mammalian, animal with backbone, which have hair on their body. And other is the primate, the mammals with hands and feet. The next one is the family homidae, apes, primitive humans and modern humans. The genus is the homo, the primitive humans and modern humans only. So the species here is the sapiens the modern, the modern human only or the scientific name is the homo sapiens so this table is just showing on how those classification can be used into to classify human being so the next one we are we are going to look at the two system of classification so in this classification we have the at the natural and the artificial so and in moreover the artificial artificial the artificial the, na sorry, the, the national classification is also classified into two subdivisions. We have the homologous, homologous, homologous structure and the evolutionary relationship. So, we are going to look at the, the first one, which is the homologous structure. Are the features of organisms that are similar in structure, but m may look very different from each other and may use for different purposes. The, the 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 second classification is the evolutionary relationship if you look at the photograph of people who who share a common ancestors such as the grandparents great grandparents you often see styling similarity in appearance these people in the photos are obviously related to each other and have inherited some features from their Grandparent. So I'm going to look at the next slide, which we have the artificial. So at, in artificial here, this group will, will then be include bed bats and many insects. You could put all animal that lives in water and have streamlined fish-like body in the same group. This group will then include fish and whales. That's for the artificial. So I'm going to look, go to the the last, the second to last slide, which is the summary of the plants and animal. Plants, animal, and microorganisms together constitute biotic components. Also, rock, soil, air, water, light, temperature are some of the abiotic components of our surroundings. Living things have certain common characteristics they, needed, they need food. They respire and excrete, respond to the environment, reproduction growth, and shown movement so we have I have the assignments and the assets of the day for you so in your note in your notebook divide this organism into the following artificial group the first one those organisms that can fly that the, the second one is those organisms that can fly only at night the third one those organisms that swim the last one is in your notebook write to reason why living organisms are classified into this group thank you for listening have a, have a wonderful day.